too, is ROTK has garnered a lot of support for himself after his story. Absolutely. Of course, I'm Capitalist. I'm joined by Blitz, who somehow continues to be a relevant co-caster in the scene <laughs> due to the constant Storm Spirit picks. Congratulations, buddy. I couldn't be happier for you. And Cap can actually just bust out the notepad, watch Universe play not 5K MMR <laughs> or Shaker games. 6K, excuse me. Oh, okay, my bad, dude. All right, Evil Geniuses versus E-Home. This is sure to be one of the most exciting matches of the whole entire tournament. I feel like E-Home, they took it to secret so dominantly, and, and what I really felt like E-Home do best is that when they are determining the tempo of the game, when they're in control, they make very few mistakes. However, I do feel that E-Home do make some rather simple mistakes when they're pressured, and I think that's the one thing that Evil Geniuses, you can say a lot about them. Even just the middle mid lane matchup, right? Samael versus CTY. This is easily Sergeant two second. of the best mid laners in this whole entire tournament facing up against each other, and both of them are known to be aggressive fighters who want to be able to win their lane and a skill-based matchup. I almost feel as though that'll hurt CTY in this matchup. The, lean, or the Storm Spirit against the Queen of Pain is heavily favored for the Queen of Pain because there's almost no way that the Storm kills the Queen of Pain. But the constant Shadow Strike harass, the fact that when you're level 6, you'll, you'll almost always hit level 6 before the Storm Spirit does. And when that happens, you should be able to just burst them down and... I think that CTY is actually one of those players that tries to get too much out of the lane sometimes. And so for, the, for me, mid matchup is where I'm at. And I think this is going to determine a lot of it. If CTY gets soloed and lets so, uh, Sumail snowball a little bit too hard, I feel like EG can just roll to a win. All right, PPD already starting things off with a little bit of body blocking. Both supports doing the same thing here. Universe as our offlane Earthshaker is going to be going for the early Fisher blocks as per the normal for offlane Earthshaker. He's facing up against YJ's Luna and Lanham's Rubik. The mid lane, we're already going to have a bit of harassment. Pretty standard from Winter Wyverns, always trying to go for that win uh, Winter Burn and just harassing out the mid laner, trying to force those early shared tangos. Yeah, and this is a matchup that CTY needs all the help in the world in, as we mentioned earlier. And just being able to get Sumail a little bit low, force him to use uh, one of his shared tangos inefficiently is going to help him a lot. But it's still going to be a rough matchup, especially when he has to rotate out. But he's actually just going to stack for CTY. And it seems like this mid matchup, CTY is going to get a lot of help in. It's probably for the best, right? As you were saying, it's a very dangerous matchup uh, for a Storm Spirit. You want to play maybe perhaps a little bit more passive, which CTY is not really known for being. So that help from DDC may be essential. Now he's going to rotate, rotate back up to the top lane to uh, help out with the pulling. Meanwhile, bottom lane, we've got ROTK playing his signature Dark Seer. Now, this is a lane that he's going to have some potential harassment coming out from the Animage, but for the most part, he's going to be putting a lot of pressure on that carry to try and get as much CS up against the double Ion Shell. It's always hard for a melee carry at this point, right? Yeah, but AUI catches ROTK with the stun and just going to right-click him down. Not level 2 quite yet, but you just want to try to harass him as much as you can. And this Anti-Mage versus Darkseer matchup, we've seen it a lot. And I think it's, it was actually Black that said he feels that it's incredibly Anti-Mage favored. Once you get a few levels of the mana break, you can just zone him out. He doesn't want before he has the Sol Ring and it's a pretty decent matchup for him, but AUI has to give him the early start at levels. Yeah, that's why he's spending so much time in lane going for the zoning. Now you can see Ehome, they're doing something interesting here. They actually picked up a haste rune on Lanham, and they're trying to rotate through the secret shop area. I'm not sure exactly what they're looking for here. Perhaps they're looking for some sort of stack of the Ancients or what, but they aren't going to find anything, at least not yet anyway. It's still that one versus one middle lane. PPD has actually rotated over just to make sure that Samael doesn't get ganked with this two minute rune. Yeah, I think he doesn't necessarily have to be there, though, because the likelihood that they gank him is incredibly low. I think this is more just so that he can easily go for a stack or just be useful in other ways, because him being at bottom doesn't really do anything, because AUI and him shouldn't be splitting levels right now. So if you notice, PPD is just going to go for the stack. This is what he should do. Eventually, you can give this to an Anti-Mage, an Earthshaker, even the Queen of Pain at some point. Now let's talk about a little bit, since we aren't seeing too much action, not too many rotations right now. Talk about the rising prevalence of the Luna in the current meta. I mean, every single TI sets its own kind of pace. Luna seems to be taking the kind of replacement to the Gyrocopter, as Gyro being, you know, constantly picked up in the first one, two has actually been banned out a lot now. Uh, it seems like Luna has now taken that role, uh, as Gyro can never be had by most teams. I mean, she just hits like a truck. The aura helps so much in pushing. It increases your entire team's uh, viability in the right-click game. 
it makes it so that average supports can zone out off laners pretty easily and she has really, really good lane sustain because you go for the Ring of Aquila, you almost always have mana for the Lucent Beam. It's incredibly inexpensive. It's 100 mana for 150 damage. It's a really good cost efficiency and it's one of those heroes that can 5-man really early and give you the high ground advantage really quickly. Now, I actually want to go back. In the early draft, you saw the Lina picked up from Evil Geniuses. And I'm going to give you some credit. You said, uh, you know, I bet that's going to be an AUI Lina, and they were actually going to be running a mid Storm Spirit. Now, Ehome were actually the ones who picked up Storm Spirit first, the response from EG being the Queen of Pain. Can you explain a little bit your reasoning behind why you thought it was going to be that way? I just think that e EG often do this where they take a hero that you think is going to be a Sumail mid hero, mm -hmm. like the uh, Queen of Pain or the Lina, and then people just forget about it, and then they're able to get a really free Storm game from I actually think that's how they set it up every single time, and so right. I was just convinced that was going to be an AUI Lina, because it's it was taken way too early. And once you see that Lina, you're, you're thinking to yourself, okay, what are the heroes that can counter it? How are we going to counter it? And you're overly focused on it. Yeah, and even if it isn't a Storm Spirit, Putting it out like that, you know, like putting out the early mid and going, okay, focus on the fact that it's going to be, you know, this hero mid and try and counter it that way. And all of a sudden they go, surprise, that's now going to be a four position Lina and we're running a different mid. That's a good way to set up some male for success, who is known for being very much a one versus one mid lane focused player. Exactly. And I mean, the hero that you don't want to give him under any circumstances in a game like this is probably that Storm Spirit, but. I mean, it's just a really smart way for PPD to set it up. Uh, but there's no anti-major in the other team or anything like that. But Sumail's pushing the lane forward. He wants to look for this opportunity. He's got enough stick charges. He's gonna, he's gonna go for it. There goes the ultimate. First one picked up by Sumail. Lana's gonna try and counter him as best as possible. It looks like with the help of the tower, they might be able to get this kill. The Shadow Grave comes in on time for PPD. And now Sumail just trying to get that distance. There's gonna be no oh, heal out. The wand is not gonna be enough. Lana, he's gonna be targeted now by PPD. He doesn't have enough damage by himself, though it seems. But AUI comes in from the side. And they pick up a two-for-one special in the middle lane. And that's what I'm talking about, CTY. I really feared that this was going to happen to him. He just gets a little bit too greedy. The Queen of Pain is always going to get the level six before you. It's just the nature of the matchup. You have to be on your toes. You have to realize Jamil's going to dive you there. And as a commentator, if I'm seeing it, CTY, that's the second time I've seen him die like that. In, I think he actually did it in the group stages as well against Sumail, and yep. it just felt like a repeat. Oh, look at that. Spamming out. Stop spamming the ball lightning. He wanted to dodge the Shatter Strike there, but Sumail, just next level on next level. Both of them kind of stop spamming their spells to try and force the other out. Looks like an invis is going to be found by AUY. Saving that one for Sumail to pick up. Perhaps he's going to use it with his next ultimate coming off cooldown. In one minute's time, Ehome, though, Radiant's actually, as they pick up their room, they go attack. for a three-man smoke. But Ehome has already backed himself up. It doesn't look like... Well, maybe they will find the kill. Universe is going to charge oh, right forward. Spot on the ward. Leading with the top pieces. And CTY jumping in. Universe very dead. Couldn't even get off a of Fisher. And this will then allow them to take this tier one. Blitz, you've hit on it so many times in our broadcast, especially going into TI. This is what the meta is all, all about right now. Utilizing those smokes to get a pick off and turn that into early objectives. This is honestly how Ehome and both. Uh, Deck play is that they go for the early game smokes to go for the offlaner. If you get the gank, great. If you don't, at the very Radiant's least, you secure the tower. tower. And the way that you can spot Ehom doing this is when you see that siege wagon come in, they always get aggressive because they want to push along side it. And great job by them being able to execute that and slowing down universe. But at the same time, Sumail, he's doing his stack right now and he's just getting further ahead of the storm. So I imagine CTY will just give up his mid to one of the, one of the other heroes and then just go do the jungle stack on his own because it's not worth it for you to show yourself on the map. If you right. kill the universe at top, then you're probably going to go look for something, but with the wave pushed up, he's actually just going to back up there and PPD is going to take the experience mid. Nice efficiency there. AUI actually, when he had to, back back, uh, had to go back to the base, he TP'd into the tier two to pick up some Mail's bottle and refresh that one as uh, some Mail was clearing through the hard camp stack that PPD built up for him. And in the meantime, PPD got some nice solo experience in the middle lane. Uh, it's kind of interesting though, they put the more, more pressure on the Dazzle to be the mid and pick up that solo experience is normally it would be the four position Lina, right? I mean, AUI is eventually going to take over that bottom lane. One spear has enough to jungle pretty much is when he's just going to rotate to that bottom lane. And I noticed that EG do this often where they leave AUI in lanes that look sort of risky and they hope that teams go for him instead of assaulting the jungle or 
if teams don't go for him, they're assuming like, okay, it's only AUI, and he gets free farm anyways. And right. I mean, we've seen what he can do when he gets just a few minutes of space, and I feel like EG abuses that to the max. Yeah, so essentially at that point in time, you're looking at either, hey, if you, you try and gank us, you're going for the Lina first, in which case that's an okay, like especially if you smoke for it, not a big deal if the four position is ganked, making sure that uh, your safe lane fear manages to be the one that avoids that gank. Speaking of that, AUI, he's going to be caught here, Lonham. Down he's his YJ. Doesn't even need the ultimate. Not necessary. That's the damage that we're talking about from the Luna Aura. Just does so much. RTK even comes in, steals a little bit of the stack, and runs himself away. Fear does have Treads and a Perseverance working towards that Battle Fury, obviously, but still needs more time to finish up that farming item. How are Evil Geniuses going to make that space for him? I mean, right now, AUI, I mean, I'm sure he's a little bit surprised that they went for the gank there because he's not used to that. He's used to just being given a little bit more space, but it does mean that Fear gets a lot of free information. He knows that there are heroes down there, and it's better for your support to gank, uh, tank the gank, but it does mean that YJ also had to rotate down, mm -hmm. so it's not a terrible trade for them. Uh, the downside right now for Ehome, though, is that Sumail is getting Dyer's huge. Middle tower the is timing of his attack. first Oblivion staff means that if he doesn't die, he gets one more kill that's like 14 minutes mm -hmm. in mental math for me. So if he gets one more kill, 14 minute Orchid, that's going to mean CTY, who's probably going to go for the Bloodstone first, is going to have such a rough time in the lane. Right, talk about a little bit the intricacy of the Queen of Pain versus Storm Spirit matchup and why it's so important for the Queen of Pain to pick up her Orchid early. It's just so that you force the Storm to be inefficient. If you don't go for the Orchid as a Queen of Pain, then you're allowing the Storm to go for the Bloodstone, and it's incredibly greedy for Storm. But he can get away with it in that case because he has no HP the But if you go for the Orchid, it forces the Storm to go for something like the Yule Scepter, which is not an ideal item at all. Like, as a Storm Spirit, you never want to go for an item like that. You want to just continue to snowball as hard as you can. Now, I love this this build, especially in offlane Earthshakers. Universe is going for the Tranquil Boots Soul Ring. He already has it. This is actually makes it so uh, Earthshaker at this point can be a very efficient farmer, bouncing himself back and forth, especially with the Tranquils uh, and the extra movement speed you have from that, bouncing back and forth from the offlane when it's pushed in into your own jungle. Uh, with the double regen items, you actually are able to farm up multiple camps really efficiently, uh, especially the Radiant side as an Earthshaker. So, Universe, if he's given much more space, he will have that Blink Dagger by about the 18 minute mark, but we'll see. I'm sure E-Home are not going to give him too much space to work with, especially with such potent gankers such as the Storm Spirit. Yeah, E-Home have to be pretty worried though, because Fear is getting pretty much the most free farm I've ever seen an anti-mage get by the 11 minute mark. He's gonna get a pretty quickly uncontested Battle Fury, and I mean, it's hard for E-Home to be able to contest the jungle at this phase of the game. EG is doing a really good job of keeping Vision up at all times, and I think they actually know that the smoke gank is coming. They're pinging like crazy. PPD is immediately running down, and yeah, it's they a counter ward. This the counter ward that was placed Radiant down as e Hulk moved through. Attack. They dropped the counter ward, but there was already one from EG, both a regular ward and a sentry. So they see that ward being placed, and they know. E home, they smoked up, they ran through that area, they dropped the counter ward, and they're coming to gank fear. And that's why PPD is going to be the one sitting here. Fear is actually hitting himself in the trees the right now, waiting for E home to go for the attack. dive. Let's see if EG respond with any sort of TPs here, or if they just give up PPD. He's been targeted by OTK. Yeah, I chilled on him here. They do have the Luna who's ready to go with that ultimate trick, but so too is Samal. Jumps in. There goes the Winter's first on to hit. They're going to try and pop him immediately. YJ lets loose the ultimate. Samal gets off his own, but it's not enough to get a kill as the e Hope's just running over Evil Geniuses at this point. This was not the fight to take. Four down, soon to be five as Universe trapped in a corner up against a creep. Leisurely, e Hope just stroll right into that tier one tower. Pick up five kills, don't drop a single hero, and now get a tier one tower. That's the way to set the tempo for the match. I mean, props to Lana, he steals the weave if you didn't notice. And that makes everybody on EG just drop to like four hits from everybody on e Home and that's what I was talking about. Ehome go for that smoke gank. It's meant to just take the tower. If you get a kill, great, but I mean, right. that went pretty much better than they ever could have imagined. Grabbing five with the tower, grabbing the anti-mage too without even a disable. Fantastic play by Ehome as Lana with that weave. That physical damage was just Radiant's a little bit too much for them to handle. I'm attack. incredibly surprised that they went for that fight in the first place, especially with the anime still trying to close in on that battle fury. Just 
tactically, but the middle lane, they're going to be able to get a pick off CTY, or maybe not. They need a little bit more damage. CTY is going to be able to make the jump soon. Still has enough damage and 200 HP, and he's able to get out. Evil geniuses just do not have the nuke potential. And it all comes down to AUI not quite being level 6. And this is going to be so frustrating for EG because that should have been a free kill. Unfortunately, it wasn't, and they're just Dyer's starting to get a little bit further behind than they would attack. like. And that anti mage was just, I was talking about how he was getting free farm, and I must have jinxed him because they immediately go down there, are able to kill him, but Fear is still incredibly close to his battle fury, and Ehome is going to struggle to take him down. They only have one real hard disable in the Winner's Curse. The Rubik lift at the end game doesn't really suffice, and at the same time, once he has enough farm, it's going to be so hard for the Storm to show himself on the map. You saw it earlier today where, you know, Storm shows himself on the map, instant one shot by the Mana Void. Mm -hmm. You've got the Mana Void, you've also got Earthshake, who is an incredibly good jumping hero against the Storm Spirit with such, you know, instant jump, chain disable between the Echo Slam and the follow-up Fisher. And that's going to make it dangerous. And of course, the Queen of Pain is still angling to pick up that early Orchid. As uh, CTY is actually stocking up a, a lot of gold, we're still expecting the Bloodstone, though, of course. Yeah, I think it's more likely. He could still go for a full Yules here. I actually might think Yules is a little bit better. He needs some way of escaping everything that EG has just to extend the fight. Really? Because you were raging pretty hard about Yules just earlier in the break room. How you really did not like that item on Storm I mean, Spirit. I still think he should go for the Bloodstone, but if he decides to go for the Yules, uh, I wouldn't hate him for it. I think if, if the Queen of Pain gets an Orchid in the next two or three minutes, I think it's more worth it. All right, Fear's still getting some farming time here in the top lane now. And they're giving some room to Universe as well. He's actually got a thousand gold in the bank working towards that Blink Dagger. Um, trying to get the most efficiency out of their jungle as possible while still safely doing it. Smell's farming up that hard camp. And there goes Ehom. And this is the thing that's really dangerous about Ehom. We kind of a lot of them in the group stage. They look pretty much flawless when they're in control of the game. Yeah, this is what they're going for. They're trying to get one pick off. They see Sumail right now, and they want to get the mid tower immediately after that. That's why CTY is pushing the lane in, so Ehom can go for this wraparound. Sumail's the real target here, though. He should have popped the Arctic Square too. There goes the double disabled. They're going to try first a bolt down. They will be successful, especially with a lot of skill in that light strike array. Universe just throws out a Fisher to try and stall up Ehome, but they're going to take the last tier one tower remaining of Evil Geniuses. Every single time Ehome goes for this play, they set it up so well. They send one hero to push in the mid lane so the others can wrap around and that one hero can join them. And then they immediately five man barrel down your tower so you have no time to respond. And CTY with this sort of start. There's no question about Radiant's it. He's gonna go for the Bloodstone. Smail's Orchid is way too late at this point, and EG, I mean, they're struggling, but at the same time, Fear continues to farm. I wouldn't be too worried yet if you're an EG fan, because he's about to pick up that Battle Fury, and once he does, it's gonna be a lot easier for him to just speed farm. Once he has the Manta, that's actually gonna be a really crucial item for him. Still, though, the team fight for now from Ehome just seems unstoppable between the early mech picked up by ROTK and the quick BKB of YJ. It looks pretty obvious that Ehome are kind of going all in for that 20 to 25 minute marker. And if they can actually take down all the tier twos, pick up Roshan with the amazing amount of team fight that they have, they'll just get such a large worth lead. Now AUI is going to be caught here. Lottam stealing that one. They actually managed to grab the blink as well, so he may look for more. Nope, never mind. Just AUI. That's all they can find. That's a free blink dagger. Actually, even better for Lottam right now. And that blink lift is going to do so much in this early game where he can pretty much initiate on whoever he wants. That'll mean that Sumail's really susceptible to ganks. He only has 1,000 HP. CTY, he's gonna push this even more aggressively, not going for the Bloodstone. He's going for the Orchid. He says, you know what? Good luck, Sumail. You thought you were gonna get the Orchid first with that early start in the laning phase. Nah. -uh. Yeah, and he opts to go for the Orchid, I think, mainly because he wants to slow down the Anti-Mage's farm. He needs to apply as much pressure as possible. I think this is also in response to the fact that they've won, like, four consecutive fights in a row, and this means that he'll always get the jump off on Smail, and getting the Orchid on Storm is so much more important than the Queen of Pain, because the Storm can roll in from pretty much any distance. Right, he can actually put out 90% of his damage as he jumps in, gets that instant disable, and get a whole bunch with the Orchid, whereas the Queen of Pain can't do the same. She jumps in, Orchid's up the Storm Spirit, but doesn't have a disable to chain with it, so the Storm Spirit's just gonna, you know, Orchid her back, and there's no damage there. I think Ehome's next play is after the stack, uh, 
The Luna's gonna have a BKB. You just walk into Roshan after dewarding, and then Rosh immediately. Get it to CTY, and then five man down. Probably uh, even bottom tower is the easiest one to go for. But I would like to see them go for the five man here. CTY, I mean, he's prepping the top, but AUI's in position, and I think after the stack, they'll probably go for the Roshan. Jump in, Samael gonna be the target here with the Orchid. AUI will respond, but Life Strike Array dodged by CTY. No chance for poor Samael. 2 to 12 right now as Eho just taking it. It's so hard for this Queen of Pain to survive against that. Even with that Lina there, CTY at the edge of his vision, spots it coming, goes for the extra jump. Perfect play so far from him, and this is the second time we've seen him lose that mid lane. And you know, they used to call him the six minute god, but he's been dominating this entire tournament after that point. And Here's what I was talking about. Immediately jump into the Roche Pit. You know you have the counter vision and you can get this for free. And after that, just go for the five man push bottom because your Luna's so stacked. Blink Dagger now picked up by Universe. This may turn the fortunes of evil geniuses, but it's looking like e Perhaps oh, just a bit too far to end. They could be just over to CTY. It's going to be one of those free oh. pickoff situations. He's going to jump in, go for PPD with that Orkin and the double damage. Easy oh, kill there. Just walks away. And that bottom tower, it's so much easier to take than that mid one. It's harder for EG to set up uh, for defenses on the high ground and that cliff area where the Earthshaker could sneak in. He's got his blink dagger too, so Ehome just wanted to eliminate all chance. Going for the bottom tower after the Roshan is the easy play for them to make. And it's just easy to call Ehome games. Like, you know what they're going to do, but they're so good at doing it that it doesn't even matter. Radiance bottom tower Look at that, if that fallen. doesn't say so much about this game. Comparing the two offlaners, ROTK has already picked up his Arcane's mech and Blink Dagger now at the same time as Universe has just picked up a Radiance Blink. Bottom tower Those is so attack. drastic net worth difference Dyer's between the two as we hit the 20 minute attack. marker. What's the total net worth difference right now? Ehome, over 10,000 gold lead right now, 10,000 experience. Tower yeah, that's attack. pretty absurd at this point in the game. It was just so many ganks that they set up for that they went for, they were originally going for the tower, but they pick up three heroes, they pick up five heroes in one engagement. They go for the Roshan, they take a tier two uncontested. None of their tier ones have fallen at this point in the game. Ehome seeping to every single one of them, and I mean, Fear, he's alone here. The TP just manages to get him out. CDC. I mean, you got to take certain risks, right, as a uh, safe lane farmer at this point in the game. You're going to get rolled over soon by Ehim. You can see they're building up such good team fight items. They're going to come at you with that Aegis. They're going to take away the rest of your tier twos, and it's not going to be long before they go uphill. You know Ehim or Notch is going to give room to fear for him to farm up, so he's got to play a little risky. He's got to be as efficient as humanly possible, even if it does come at the risk. Oh, what's hot? Jump in. YJ. Managed to get the cold embrace, and looks like Ehome are going to be just attack. fine. In fact, they're all even looking for the Winter's Curse there. TTY going to come in for the side. Some male spots him out, puts the Orchid on him. PPD is responding there with at least the heal universe. Doesn't have anything to be able to jump in. They just put the Shadow Grave, and Samael will be able to get out. But Ehome push back Evil Geniuses for another tower. Radiant's top tower is under yeah, attack. And this should be a free tower for them. There's no way Dyer's that he, uh, EG decides to defend attack. this anymore. They use the Echo Slam already at top. This is going to mean that Fear is just going to go for the split push. He was going to go for the Vlad, but recognizes that that Orchid Storm isn't going to allow that to happen. And oh, CTY comes in with like pretty much no HP at all. He's fearless and he dodges it. What a dodge! He still goes down, but that's just the ages. Fear is going to try and jump away. ROTK tries to follow him, but it was a blink and TP out. Dyer's bottom tower. CTY, has man, what a dangerous player. Almost picks up the kill in the animage. That would have been huge. Still, though, the tower goes to the Radiant, and that's something for EG. This hurts to watch. He's actually, I mean, this just embarrasses me. That dodge, that timing on it as well, it was just so well played. And CTY making himself a case for the best storm here. And I mean, that's just absurd to me. It's like, I have speechless right now every single time that he goes for it. He's about to pick up a 24 minute Bloodstone Orchid in a competitive game against one of the best teams in the world is absurd, but EG, I mean, they can still do it. That was an excellent escape by Fear. He's about to pick up the Manta style. I can't stop saying it enough. Anti-Mage versus Storm Spirit, one of the easiest things to do. All you have to do is wait for that 10k Storm net worth to go in. You instantly get rid of it with just one man. Oh, Fear. Spotted out by DDC and Lottom. They actually stole the Blink, brings it back. Telekinesis, Winter's Curse is going to be coming in soon. Get the pullback. Winter's Curse now laid on to Fear with the Orchid on top. It's almost enough damage. There it is. Wicked sick for CTY. And he looks for more on the side of Lottom. TBD trying to go for the TB out, but no chance. Eho, the nukes are too much. 
and they're just everywhere right now. PPD thought that uh, the anti mage was going to be able to survive one more hit, but that's a DD Storm Spirit. That's so much damage right now. That's 250 a hit. No way that an AM can survive that right now. And I mean, EG, they just have to work at stopping the bleeding right now. You have to get your anti mage that Manta style. You have to trust in the universe to make a big play. Sumail still playing one of the best heroes at catching up with that Sonic Wave on that Queen of Pain. You can still do this if you're EG, but every single Radiant's time one of those things happens, the margin just closes. The bleeding's about to get a whole lot worse, though, as CTY is closing in on that Bloodstone. Start racking up the charges soon. YJ also, he has his next team fight slash pushing item coming in, the Manta. Soon to make its debut. This means YJ doesn't even have to worry necessarily about popping BKB against the Orchid, even if it's put against him. And he's also tanky. He's sitting at 1500 HP, 18 armor. He's got Radiant's light steel. He's got some attack. heals to back him up with the mech. Cold embrace as well. Just doesn't seem like evil geniuses are ever going to be able to kill this Luna. Yeah, it's actually going to require some sort of crazy echo slam into a multiple hero mana point, but I wouldn't put it past EG. Has the capacity is still there. Universe is still playing one of the best heroes at making comebacks. But Ehome right now have complete map control, and if they want, they can just wait out the next Roshan, farm out both sides of jungles, and then occasionally go for the pickoff to keep them on the Universe, big jump in from CTY. He wants to be able to be a part of this kill. ROTK snags it, dominating spree for him. And there's another blink dagger, Lana. He's now picked up his. The items just keep on rolling in for Ehome. Now the Manta is there for the Luna. Evil Geniuses, meanwhile, the only item they have coming in is potentially the Manta on Fear, and that's still a good 1,100 gold away. Once he gets that Manta style, the real game begins. If he's able to actually get uh, some towers down, split push, and force some pressure around the map, he can actually start to do some stuff, but... It's going to require near-perfect play from him. I mean, we saw it from Burning's anti-mage today. It's not within, uh, out of the realm of possibility that Fear can turn this game around. Again, it's still one of the best counters in the game, but it's the rest of the team that's struggling so much. RTK, he's actually going for an ultimate orb here. Is there a possibility that we're going to be seeing uh, a Lotus Orb? I think they're going for... All? I think if you go for an early Hex here, it's almost unstoppable over going for something like the Shiva's Guard. I think okay. that going for the Hex might actually just be a game ender. If you get something like a Lincoln's for your Storm Spirit, and he can just trigger Lincoln's after Lincoln's to stop the Mana Void, that would be incredibly strong too. If you notice EG's lineup, they have very little single target Dyer's outside of Sumail. If you block an Orchid, that's fantastic too for your Storm Spirit. Yeah, pretty much EG would be left at some sort of like Orchid play against the Lincoln's and then freeing up the Mana Void potential, but going to be hard-pressed to find those opening against CTY, who's so active on his Storm Spirit, always jumping back and forth, causing as much confusion as possible. Fear does have his Manta now, and he's also got his level 3 Mana Void almost in reach. Yeah, the fact that Fear is almost level 16 in a game like this is kind of absurd, but he does have that Manta style, and like I was saying before, this could be what changes the game for them, because he does do a lot of damage, but I mean, this means that Ewhome would also have to mess up a lot. Like, the Winter's Curse would have to be misplaced, the Luna would have to be preoccupied, and top tower right, you're gonna rely on a huge universe Echo Slam right now. EG, going for a three-man smoke behind Fear. Hoping to be able to catch somebody in this top lane and turn it into an objective. The lead on the RTK Smell jumping in, gonna try and blow up the Dark Seer as soon as possible. Everything being blown there. Now CTY jumps in with the Orchid onto Smell, fearlessly going for it, but against the Manta of Fear, he's gonna be driven back. Oh, he's, out of he's completely out of mana, but he has a regeneration. He pops it now, and this is the opportunity for e home to turn back. This may not be an easy tier one tower for EG, and they know it too. They're already gonna start TP back. Hey, UI's gonna be caught. He's already done for, lays out whatever spells he can, and all EG leaves is just the Manta Illusions to push in the Tier 1 tower, but it's not going to be enough. The tower stays up. It was still a decent trade for them, though. They lose the Lina, but they get a kill on the Darkseer, and mm -hmm. they just need to play a little bit more actively, which is what they were going for. Open up some space for Fear, just make it a little bit easier for him to farm, and now that you've seen three heroes rotate and TP top, it means that Fear's going to have all the time in the world here to just farm, and... This is kind of the play that you have to make. You trade one of your underfarm supports just for information. So at this point in time, Ehome very clearly in control of this game, but at what point do they make their move? 
Are we looking at the next Roshan? They grab the next Aegis. Is that going to be Radiant's enough? Or do you want to see them finish up attack. the Butterfly? Or maybe just control the map and get a six-slotted Luna? I think you go for the Aegis for sure. There's no reason not to at this point. Mm -hmm. You can probably smoke before the Aegis, uh, wrap around, try to deny EG vision, and try to pick somebody off. And if you do, then you go for the Roshan for sure. If you don't, then you get the Roshan anyways. So I wouldn't be surprised if Ehome decided to go for a smoke before the Roshan. Jump in, free pick off there. There goes AEY. CTY finds some more Bloodstone charges up to 11 already. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Uh oh, here. Been spotted out here. He wants to get to turn the final one again, but that's not the right idea. With the rest of the Ehobo right behind him, they lock attack. down Fear and will now free up the easiest Roshan of Ehobo's life. That must have been such a surprise for ZYF. Radiant's he walks in there, he's like, under attack. wait a second. <laughs> And then everybody from Ehome responds, they're like, that's the real one! As soon as he pops the Manta, and they were able to get the kill on that, but... Just unfortunate mistakes by EG right now that they can't afford to make, because CTY is going to get an Aegis, and now that mana no, will play into the mode of the And that's probably one of the hardest things as an Animage in this game, is that Winter's Curse is such a potent disable, because most of the time Animage jumps in, you've got that confusion. Right, of being able to pop the Manta, create those illusions, they're not sure which one is the real one. For DDC, it doesn't really matter too much. He throws out the Winter's Curse on one of them, it's gonna catch the the you know the other two. So at that point, it's a guaranteed disable on the enemy and you're gonna figure out which one is which after that. Yeah, it's just an incredible team fight control spell. It means that whatever overfarmed hero you have is liable to just die to his own teammates, you can instantly focus him down. There's enough follow-up damage that that's a reality, but uh, EG. Things are looking a bit grim, but again, you just gotta keep going back to the anti-mage play. The me level 3 mana void can still do ridiculous things if Ehome e decide to overextend, but that might be the only way that EG wins anymore if Ehome just make a lot of mistakes in a row. And they do have some of the counters to the Orchid jump from CTY. They now have the Yule Scepter picked up from the Earthshaker. Uh, Samael is about to complete his BKB, just he needs another 200 gold. And uh, trying to farm it from this middle wave, but CTY already putting that pressure in. Radiance middle tower is yeah, now under attack. We haven't looked at it in a while, and I'm afraid to look, but it's a 20k network difference. Ooh. Same for the experience right now. Ehome. They might even have the better late game lineup at this point, in all honesty. That Winter Wyvern is making things so hard. Yeah, absolutely. Between the Luna and the Storm Spirit, you've got a lot of late game power there. You've got the Darkseer on top, potentially the more potent offlaner against that Earthshaker. It all just comes down to individual play. There's the Butterfly now for the Luna. BKB is up for some mail. Question is, even if they are able to have the defensive items to deal with the Storm Spirit jump, how are they ever going to deal with Luna? YJ is sitting on 1800 HP, has Butterfly, Magic Immunity, Manta style, Mech behind him. The list goes on and on and on of defensive items for Luna to just survive through the base set of nukes and keep on trucking. Yeah, nobody's getting an MKB anytime soon. You probably just have to burst them down with something like the Earthshaker initiating before she can get her BKB up. I mean, that's that's a really common thing that happens. Earthshaker's one of the better heroes against teams with BKBs. It just depends on who's faster, but uh, it's not ZYF that has that BKB, or he actually doesn't Radiant's have the Aegis, so they're gonna send him first. Attack. All right, here comes Dyer's the E home push, popping the mantle attack. already. The tier three tower. Here. Evil geniuses, they don't really want to be fighting into an Aegis, but Radiant's they want to keep their racks alive. It may not be a choice. Seems like they're going to give it up. Oh, never mind. Three man smoke. They got to defend Lift it. his pops. Ehome's just going to go for mid as well. They have to go for this here. YJ has already been locked up. AY sacrificing himself immediately. CTY goes for him. And he's going to be able to lock his hand up for the shell. Brave saves him actually. Keeps him alive. There goes the Aegis already taken out. Winter's first lane into fear though. He's going to be going down here. Couldn't afford that one. He does not have a buyback. Now YJ pops his ultimate. Runs down two. Good game. 32 minutes in. A 3 to 22. And the evil geniuses drop game number one. Great meme score as Evil just is completely dominant in this first game. That was not what I expected. EG is typically the team that almost always walks away with that first game victory, but I mean, they were just aggressive from start to finish. After that first kill that Sumail got on mid, I really thought that 